Hey guys, I'm here with Catherine Lash, the owner of Spirit Quest, and we're just going to talk a little bit about the power of breath and how it applies to anxiety. Hey Kat, can you tell us a little bit more about tools that you would use to help a person manage their anxiety? Absolutely. One of the most powerful um, tools that I know of is we carry with us every day, all the time. And we utilize it every day, all the time. But we're not real present with it. We're not real aware of it. And luckily, it's a God-given gift that every person possesses. And all we have to do is become more acquainted with it and use it as a practice and um, understand the power of our own breath. So our own breath, that prana that we have that's connected to the energy body that is powered by breath, our lives, every moment we breathe, we become more alive. And every moment that we hold our breath, we shrink. And it's like the moon. It's either waxing or it's waning. It's either growing and expanding and becoming more vibrant or it's dimming and it's losing its vibrance. That's the same with our soul, with our energy body. And we can activate it through breath. And ironically, when we hold the breath, that's when more anxiety happens. That's when angst happens. Because anxiety is often driven from the need to be perfect and not fail. What will they think of me? What if I can't do it? How am I going to fix this? It's like that desire to control. It's mixed with fear and control. So the opposite of that is surrender and trust and just be in the flow. And we can, that's a logical thing to know that, to go, okay, I need to be in the flow, but to actually use your breath to let it go, to actually use, to be present with your breath, to release it from your being. So a lot of yogi breaths are all about this. And typically we use the ujjayi breath, which is in through the nose, out through the mouth. In through the nose, out through the mouth. It's like a measured breath. If it takes eight counts to go in, it's going to eight take eight counts to be released. Sounds like the ocean if you're doing it right. It's got this beautiful in and out flow where you put your intention, if I release today's tension, today's stuff, whatever has a ridden, a, arises in your path that is a stumbling block or that is causing you to worry. Worry is the greatest enemy of all of us. And it's the very thing that we do the most is when we're anxious, is be troubled about tomorrow, what's to come, and if we're good enough, worthy enough to do it, to face it, to solve it. But if we back up and we live in the strength of our being with our connection to source, and we know we're worthy, and we live in the heart of compassion, and we use that mindful breath, this too shall pass. I can surrender this to God, surrender it to spirit, to surrender it to the universe, to source. That it's not some burden I have to carry on my back constantly trying to prove myself. Let go of that perfection and know that you embody divine perfection in any given moment, second. You were born with it, it is your birthright. Own it. And step into it in a very compassionate, loving, deep way, a very subtle way where you don't have to talk about it a lot. You don't have to say anything. You have to be it and become it rather than advertise it and shout it to the world. 
So it's a personal practice that you do during the day to stop, get present with what's around you, what's showing up. In fact, if you're, if you're a worry wart, if you, if you stop it at any moment and you look around, you realize that 95% of what is around you is glorious and fabulous. That's what we want is presence. And then to know I am here. I exist. I am beautiful. I can release this into the flow. And we remind ourselves to do that through meditation and through a breath, our breath forms. I like to use the HA as like fogging a mirror. Primordial sound of the universe. When the nervous system hears that, it relaxes and says, oh, oh yeah, okay, everything is okay. Is okay. And let me tell you something, even if it's not going to be okay, love your life, the good, the bad, the ugly, love it all, and see it as your life's journey and path. So you can surrender and not have to be that perfectionist of every moment. People will love you even if you mess up, you know, <laughs> and you can love yourself even if you don't do it perfectly. But the greatest thing is to sit in that God source where you just feel centered and balanced and relaxed. Beautiful, Catherine. And just one last question I have for you. What are some tips that you have for people that suffer with insomnia? Yeah, insomnia is an interesting one because um, it can be, you know, chemically related. It can be the food you're eating. It can be that caffeine you drink after three o'clock. It can be that you're low in magnesium. It can have a physiological aspect to it. So I definitely would check out the foods that, that are being eaten or not eaten. The worst thing you can do is do stimulants all day and you know, then people are like, okay, why can't I sleep? But I live on coffee. Hello? No. So we reduce the stimulants. We um, really, you know, take the supplements that we need. Um, stress, the number one mineral that's going to disappear is magnesium. That can ca definitely cause um, insomnia, muscle cramps, can cause a lot more anxiety to arise. And most of us are deficient in it. So I would first take a look at that. And then I would utilize, um, you have to look at when the ins insomnia is occurring. Is it that you can't go to sleep? Is it that you wake up in the middle of the night? Is it, you know, when is it? And depending on that, it, it might be something in the brain that a, a story or something you gotta figure out. So is the, is the mind being activated? Is the body sore and it's having spasms and neurological spasms? I mean, insomnia is really a conversation that is very specific to the maladies that one is experiencing. Is it a panic attack? I had full-blown panic attacks for five years in my life where I'd awake from a dead sleep and just feel like I was going to die. So... What happens when, when we're facing that situation is that we are out of our bodies and we are into the story, we're into the mind. And it's this false sense that there's, there's horrible things encroaching upon us or that there's doom <laughs> going to happen to us. Or, and really, again, if you stop and you look around you, you're like, oh, well, I'm safe, everything's good. So we have to bring ourselves back into our bodies and we can do that if you're having panic attacks or things like that. You take an apple and you get into the crunch. You, you hear it, you see it, you taste it and your mind will go, but, 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 but I need to think about this and I need to solve that. And you're, no, I'm right here eating this apple. So you get into that and you really get into your body and you say, wait a minute, here I am, and everything in this room is perfect for me. I don't have to solve this until tomorrow, or or maybe this doesn't have to be solved at all. And so that's the first step, is getting back into your body. And then I would util utilize a breath form to calm, or the EFT tapping, emotional freedom technique tapping, 
which we could do another video specifically on that. But that is really excellent for deprogramming that thought that is plaguing you and putting in its place another perspective that is more relaxing and calming and is really closer to the truth. So I would say for insomnia, um, you know, at the center here, we would go into a deeper conversation as to the symptoms of it, what's causing it, when does it occur, and there, there are several other remedies for insomnia. All right, Catherine. Well, thank you so much for all those great insights, and thanks for watching, guys.